Hi, my name is Christy Harmon, and this is my friend Dal Gaines. And I just wanted to introduce you guys because, first off, he is an incredible person. He's a first responder, but he has also done a lot of things um, to help other people. And also to mention, he also started the Valhalla Barbell Club, which we have here at Fox Fitness. That's where we are currently doing um, this interview today. This is where I also do jujitsu, um, and where I met Dal. We both got our blue belts together. I just wanted you guys to hear his story and. And um, just to hear a little bit more about what he does. My name is Dal Gaines. And it's kind of always been a passion of mine, getting to help people in, in really valuable ways. Partly it's using my education. I have my bachelor's degree in exercise physiology, actually. I also have my CSCS, which is Certified Strength Conditioning Specialist. And I got those basically as a backup plan to the fire department, but then it kind of became one of those, it's like, well, how can I use this education? to better further help people that are around me, to help further them, help the people they serve. It's kind of a little bit snowballed, and it's been a good thing. It's helped me in a lot of ways. Honestly, it's not all altruistic. It, it helps me help people. I've gone through my own struggles, and I've found that instead of being super internal, if I'm open and I help people, it, it helps me deal with my own issues. It, it humanizes everybody. I went to a, a conference. There was a pretty prominent fire chief, and he was talking about how he had a, a captain when he was a younger firefighter tell him that when you get to the station he had a he had an actual shoebox he said all your problems are at home and he handed the firefighter the shoebox and said go inside the shoebox and he put them underneath your bed while you're here at the station and you don't take them back out until you go back home the bad part is is that is telling firefighters and people in general to I don't want to know about your problems you need to leave that at home and not bring it to me not bring it to here we have a job to do but ultimately, like, we're supposed to be a family. Like fire departments, they call it a brotherhood. And it's not much of a brotherhood if you say, whatever you got going on at home, leave it at home. And while the example, it makes sense, kind of. Like, when you come to work, you need to be ready to work and you have your stuff squared away and ready to go make calls. Nobody works that way. But if we tell guys, like, shove it all down, don't speak about it, once those things come up, they don't even know how to, how to really process it because all they've been told is to compartmentalize, compartmentalize, compartmentalize. And so when they have these feelings come up that they haven't been dealing with, it really comes out in sadness and anger and you get a kind of a big explosion. Nobody's going to have a fight with their wife or their kid or have something happen at home with money and be able to walk inside another door the next day and just forget everything. That's what sick leave's for. It's not just for, I have the flu. Like, Go, go mentally take a day um, to fix whatever you need to, or just to, to clear everything and then come back ready to work. That's fine. And that's where I get at with the cup analogy. Like, say you have a cup and you fill it full of water, and it can be a drop of water or a full pour, but as that cup fills up and we're not processing anything and we're not letting those things come out, then ultimately it over pours. And it usually over pours with like family and friends, the people you really care about. If you don't know how to go internal and know what is affecting you, you never know how to empty your cup either. It's really noticing like the domino effect of how all these things just kind of start playing into each other. Thinking that something as little as like leave your problems at home can turn into something as big as like suicide. That's one of the harder things like for men. Men don't cry. Men just, you get up and walk it off, pull your, pull your boots up by the bootstraps and you go about your day, day, you know, rub some dirt on it. And that's fine. Mental toughness is good. But mental toughness without mental awareness is catastrophic. You're avoiding something that's hard by not dealing with your emotions. That's not very manly. Um, that's cowardly. It took a long time for me to actually be introspective enough to like, oh, I'm, I'm not processing my emotions right. You know, I, th I lived by like, this is what a manly man is. Basically built my physique around the idea of what a manly man is. And I, I competed in boxing, I competed in jiu-jitsu, I competed in martial arts, powerlifting. You know, if you're not the biggest, strongest, and fastest, there's somebody out there that's better than you. It's a better man than you are. Because that's how we, a lot of times, that's how men are judged against each other grew up with an abusive father that told me those things, both mentally, emotionally, and physically. This isn't the reason I chose the fire department, but it's a part of my identity. When I had part of that identity to take away, it was an identity crisis, and I really had to go internal and figure, figure out who I was, and ultimately like how to explain who I am and who you can be to other people. 
and I went into a fire and it was a pretty routine fire. It was at like 6, 15 in the morning. It had been burning all night. So it was burning through the attic. And then finally it got into the kitchen and a window broke out. And so we get there, I was pulling ceiling with a hook and the guy behind me hooks the attic beam and it had been burned through on both ends, but you can't, we can't see. And so I'm sitting there pulling the ceiling, looking up like this, and he hooks the attic beam behind me and that entire attic beam comes down and catches me on the side of the head and snaps my neck over. And uh, took me to the floor, but I got a, it gave me a stinger down my arm. And I didn't think much of it. It was just like football, like you get a stinger, you get up kind of like shake it off. Long story short, over the next few days, and then I ended up going to the doctor and I fractured two vertebrae, herniated two discs. I fractured my C5 and C6 and I herniated my C5, C6 and C6 and C7. Well, it, it caused uh, compression to my spinal cord. My C5, C6 compressed my spinal cord. And I lost motor function to, over the next few weeks, to my right pec, my tricep, and my lat. And, um, so at the time they were talking about medical retirement and me going through disability, so I started lying to get back to work. I, I ended up going back to work, I was still struggling with, I could barely use my right arm, I had no strength in it. Not sleeping at home, not sleeping at the station, struggling with my identity now that I can't even work out. And then I had relationships problems because of it. I was never in a good mood. I was always tired, always in pain, always frustrated, always in fear that at any point I was gonna lose my job and be on disability, which I did not wanna do. I fear that I'll never get better. Like I'm getting ready to go into surgery. I've had an, another injury with my neck that I can't put off surgery any longer. For quite a while, I won't be able to work out or be active or um, do the things that I enjoy doing. And like I got to a pretty bad place for a while. Basically, I sought out therapy. We all need that support system. That is 10 times more beneficial than anything else you can do with your life. And I used to have that um, stigmatism about it that like therapies for weak people and you go and you sit on the couch and it's like you deal with your own problems. But uh, when I heard Jordan Peterson explain it, that it's like a mind mechanic. Like when, you, when your car's not acting right, you take it to a mechanic. When your brain's not acting right, you take it to a therapist. And I say this humbly, because I don't want this to sound arrogant, but if I can look the way I look, do the job I do, but also be a beacon for emotional health, maybe we can start breaking down those barriers. And then find a goal, whether it be read one book a month for your mind, and you know, I'm going to add five pounds to my whatever movement, or I'm going to take a minute off my mile, or I'm going to add a mile to my run, or I'm going to start jujitsu. That's been such a good one for me mentally and learning these things that I, I highly recommend that to anybody.